This video lecture is intended to help you with your N2 guided worksheet or the worksheet associated with Newton's second law. If you recall, Newton's second law says that force is needed to accelerate objects. With no force, there's no acceleration. With force, and by force we mean net force, so when there is a net force on an object, there is acceleration. Now recall that a couple of weeks ago we talked about free fall. When an object is in free fall, the only force acting on it is gravity. There are no other forces acting on the object, meaning that gravity is the net force on the object. Since there is a net force, there is acceleration, and we call that the acceleration due to gravity or 10 meters per second squared. However, in reality, we know that there are many other forces acting on objects as they fall through the air. So when an object falls through the air, it not only experiences the force of gravity, which is pulling it downwards, but it also experiences air resistance, or air drag, which is an upwards acting force. When the air resistance force is non-negligible, meaning it's big enough to be measured, we no longer say that the object is in free fall because there's now another force acting on it besides gravity. Air resistance depends on two things. Air resistance depends on an object's speed and depends on an object's surface area, meaning that air resistance increases as an object's speed increases, and air resistance increases with increased surface area. If you think about a piece of paper, for example, if you take two of the same piece of paper, like two pieces of folder paper, for example, and you crumple one up, but you leave one flat, which one will experience more air resistance? Hopefully you said the flat one. And that's because the mass hasn't changed, but the surface area has. So oftentimes we think that lighter objects experience more air resistance, but really it depends on the surface area. In the paper example, you're not changing the mass, so one isn't lighter than the other, but one does have a greater surface area. Um, let me get this so that you can see both of the forces here. So when the object is moving fast enough that air resistance, the upwards force, equals the gravitational force, then the net force is then zero. And that's because we have an upwards force equal and opposite to the downwards force. So they cancel each other out. So with no net force, there's no acceleration. With no acceleration, the velocity does not change. We call this point in time terminal velocity. So terminal velocity is reached when the force of air resistance is equal to the force of gravity. If we look at an example, imagine a skydiver jumps from an airplane. Both the skydiver's weight, which is due to gravity, and air resistance are acting on the falling object, or the skydiver. As their speed increases, so does the force of air resistance. As the force of air resistance increases, the net force is reduced, meaning that the force of air resistance becomes closer and closer to the force of gravity. When the net force is reduced, the acceleration is also reduced. Eventually, once the skydiver is going fast enough, air resistance will equal their weight or their gravitational force. At that point, the net force is zero. There is no longer acceleration, and the diver has reached terminal velocity. They will continue to fall at that speed until, well, until they hit the ground. So if we apply this to the penny example that we brought up in the beginning of the year, we said what would happen if someone dropped a penny from the Eiffel Tower or from the Empire State Building. 
and our initial thought was that the penny would continue to accelerate, building up speed every single second. And it would eventually get so fast that it could maybe kill someone. In reality, though, if we imagine this as the penny, the penny's downward force, the gravitational force of the penny, or its weight, is very small. So it doesn't take very long for air resistance to equal that downward force. So a penny's terminal velocity probably isn't very fast. We're going to skip this video. Um, all right, let's do a quick check here. When a 20 Newton falling object encounters 5 Newtons of air resistance, what is the acceleration of the object? Is it less than gravity? Remember, gravity is 10 meters per second squared. More than gravity, gravity, or is there no acceleration at all? The acceleration is less than gravity. Recall that acceleration due to gravity only occurs during free fall. If there's ever any other force acting on an object, even just 5 newtons of air resistance, then the acceleration will be less than g. So we say that acceleration of a non-free fall is always less than g. Try this one. If a 50 newton person is to fall at terminal speed, what amount of air resistance is needed? Recall that terminal speed is reached when the net force is zero. So hopefully you got that the, the force of air resistance must equal 50 newtons. And this weird little symbol means net force. As the skydiver falls faster and faster through the air, the air resistance increases. Because recall that air resistance depends on speed and surface area. As the skydiver continues to fall faster and faster, the net force on the skydiver decreases. And that's because the air resistance is getting close, the force of air resistance is getting closer to the force of the object's weight. Now, if the net force decreases, what does her acceleration do? It also decreases because net force is directly proportional to acceleration. All right, that should help you with that portion of the guided worksheet.